Hi, I'm in Toluca. It's about a thousand feet higher than CDMX, otherwise known as Mexico City. So you'll see me thinking, so having difficulty breathing just because I haven't yet adapted to the uh, differences in elevation. Um, right now I'm in Toluca in Mexico, which is about two hours away from basically central, the center of Mexico City. And just a couple of quick thoughts. Uh, Toluca is a, is, a, is a cute place and you probably want to give yourself you know, a couple days to adjust to the elevation if you're coming from sea level uh, or close to sea level like I am. What you'll notice is in, in a lot of these older places is that you know, you've got a, a section of the town that's almost what is known as a tourist section. This is not it. Um, this is pretty much where the locals are. And the tourism place would be primarily a place with foreign investment. And so if you, if you think about the places I've seen in Toluca, one of them would be essentially a, an American outpost. You've got a McDonald's, you've got uh, almost all USA businesses in the area. And of course I was staying at a USA owned hotel. So it all sort of makes sense. So that would be the tourist or foreign section of town. What this section is, is probably considered old, the old town. And, you know, you can see that, you know, one of the problems I'm guessing, I'm, I'm completely speculating, specul I'm, I'm based on speculation, but I'm guessing the Catholic Church owns most of the property here. And so when we talk about concentration of ownership, it's not only because a concentration of ownership can lead to a monopoly, which then makes it easier to exploit workers. The real issue, another issue, with a concentration of ownership, especially with real estate, is that there's no incentive to upgrade buildings when they start to fall apart. And one of the reasons Silicon Valley has been you know, on the forefront or of the, of the American imagination is this idea that the digital can last forever with only a minimal upkeep in terms of maintenance costs. And it turns out that's false as well. Uh, JP Morgan, I think, spends $10 billion a year on, on security, digital security. Uh, so you've got a situation where you've got a sort of a segregation based on property ownership. You've got segregation on this side of town based on you know, you know what is a concentration of ownership. But a few government buildings scattered around, those tend to be uh, fairly well done. If you go to another side of town, uh, where I was, that was essentially the American side of town. That's also a bit run down because again, just because it's a corporation that's buying up things, uh, doesn't mean that it, it too has an incentive to upgrade or maintain upkeep of that real estate. So overall, you know, the other part of town that I went to, well, it was actually not, not, wouldn't be considered part of Toluca. It was a really nice place called Metapec. And that place was sort of almost like a small European village. That was the nicest place I went to, but you have to pretty much go to a specific section of that town. And it's not easy to find. And, you know, that way, in, in that town, you could see you know, there was a lot, of, a, a lot of diversity within the businesses, which indicates uh, diversity of ownership, which kind of makes sense when you think about it. Um, so I think that when we're talking about, you know, all these sort of broad, you know, economic theories, a lot of them don't account for law. In other words, the tendency of the prevailing class to establish protection of their neighborhoods uh, based on you know, either uh, legislation or some other form of, of uh, I'm trying to think of what the right word would be. Oh, this is a, a library. So like I said, the government buildings tend to be fine. Uh, so, And in fact, there's a cafe right over here as well that looks nice. And of course, it's right next to the library, which is nice. So not a coincidence. Um, but again, it's something to think about when we think about e economics. It's not only a purely financial transaction. There's a tendency for not only people, but businesses to, to, to clump together. And when that happens, you've got a situation where you've got segregation 
And then you have less incentive for outsiders to come in because of that legislation aspect of that lobbying aspect we just talked about. And if that happens, you're gonna end up with a situation where you sort of don't, you haven't built a city in the way that it should be built. And that means, and by that, I mean that it hasn't actually, it's not a place where you maximize the potential of every citizen and every resident within that city, which is really what a city should be about. So when you look at businesses and you go and walk around, try to take a look at, you know, which areas are run down, which areas are doing well, and then try to project 50 years out. You know, what, what, what is this place gonna look like? And what policies would, should be put in place uh, that would be favorable to not only a diversity of, of experience, but a diversity of ownership.